Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're having a good day. I have a quick tip today that was sent to me by Matthias Zosel, and I'll put a link to his website below. He has a lot of great work. And he sent me all these renders that he's made, and I'm gonna go over a quick tip that he sent me. And he has been using this environment in Redshift and adding fog, but then he's doing a little extra technique that's gonna add noise to the fog and really break it up. If we look through these, you'll have basically a standard scene, but then if you go one step further and add this breaking up pattern with noise, you get these really, really photoreal, beautiful results. And you can see that there's, just by tweaking some of the settings, there's a lot of different looks that you can get. All right, so we're in Redshift, and the first thing we need to do is have a light that's going to create that environmental fog. We're just gonna use a regular dome light. And then we need to make the fog by going to Redshift Object and a Redshift, uh, where is it? Redshift Environment. All right, so the environment is gonna create the fog, but we have to make the light uh, generate that fog by going to the Volume tab. And under Contribution Scale, we're gonna kick that up. And it doesn't have to be very much, it's very subtle. So it's gonna be something very, very subtle like 0 .006 and we'll have our fog here. And to change the settings of the fog, if you wanna change the tint, you can do that in your dome light if we wanted to make this a little bit of a yellow tint. But the rest of the fog settings are going to be in the redshift environment. You can also tint the fog here. Uh, a couple of the important things are attenuation and phase. So you can play around with these. Phase is going to bring the fog forward and closer to the, the camera, or it's gonna push the fog further back and reveal more of the scene. So we're gonna have it something like this. All right, so I'm not gonna play around with this too much. There's a lot of tutorials about fog out there. But what I wanna show you is how to add some noise to this. And we're gonna do that by creating a new material. So let's go to Create Redshift Materials, and we're gonna go down to Volume. We're gonna take that volume material and drag it onto our Redshift environment. And it's gonna break things temporarily, but let's open up that, uh, that texture here. We don't want this volume node right here. We're just gonna delete that, and we're gonna look for noise instead. So we'll drag in a Redshift noise, and we're gonna pipe that into the volume. And now we're gonna have this Redshift noise driving the volume, and we can go to the noise type and change it to turbulence, and you're gonna be able to start seeing what's going on here. So we're breaking up this fog pattern with this noise. So we can change some of these settings if we want to with the noise. You can really dial this into what you're looking for. And the scale looks pretty small, so you can go to the coordinates and change the scale. Maybe we'll make it a little bit bigger. And then all the color is now coming from this, uh, this noise. So we have color one and color two. If we want to make this a little bit more subtle, we can make the top one a little bit more of a gray pattern. And then all we have to do is dial in our scene here. It looks like we want a little bit more exposure maybe on this light. We can maybe go to the volume contribution scale, maybe increase that a little bit to get more fog. And it's a little bit hard to see in this tutorial. Um, if I change that back to black, you'll be able to see it a little bit more. But basically what we're doing is we're taking this noise pattern and we're breaking up that fog so that we get these really nice realistic results and it's not just uniform. So let's go back to some of these renders. You can see how we have these, these beautiful god rays, but then we have this noisy pattern that's breaking things up. It looks a lot more natural. So huge thanks to Matthias. I've gone over this technique before, but I wanted to show you some of his renders as well because it really shows what's possible using this technique. Hope you all found it useful, and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.